Welcome to E Know How. In this video, we will look at p-type and n-type semiconductors. So first, I will begin with the intrinsic semiconductor silicon. So silicon has an atomic number of uh, 14. So it has uh, four valence band electrons. So it says four valence electrons. Four valence electrons. And then the way it forms bonds with the adjacent silicon atoms is like this. So each silicon atom has four valence electrons. And then if I draw adjacent, like say four more silicon atoms that are adjacent to it. So each of them has again four valence electrons, which I represent here by these dots. And now if you look at the bonds, these are the, these are the bonds in intrinsic silicon. So the electrons are in the in the covalent bonds. Now with application of uh, temperature or even at room temperature, some of these electrons can actually escape the bond and they can be outside the bond here. And so what happens is it will leave a hole, it will leave a hole here. A hole is left where the electron, so it's a vacancy of an electron. Now if you map these with uh, energy levels, so we saw that there is, uh, in intrinsic silicon, there is a valence band upper limit energy level and a conduction band lower limit. And the electrons can possess energies below the EV or above EC. So and this is the band gap or the energy gap we have. This is energies. Now if you map these electrons on the left side into the band diagram, so they will look like this. So uh, the electron, say for example here, outside here, can be mapped to the energies above EC. And whereas the electrons that are inside the bonds can be mapped to energy levels below EV. So they cannot move with the application of an electric field. And only the, the little amount of electrons that have escaped the bonds can move. So that determines the resistivity rho for intrinsic silicon. And we saw in another video that the intrinsic silicon resistivity, the rho for intrinsic silicon is approximately 3.2 multiplied by 10 power 5 ohm centimeter, so which is a pretty high value. So now how do we reduce the resistivity of this? Reduction in resistivity can be achieved by adding p-type or n-type impurities into silicon. So let's look at p-type uh, p-type silicon first. So p-type impurities, boron is an example of a p-type impurity. And boron, the atomic number is five. It has three valence electrons. So it has three valence electrons. Now if you diffuse boron into silicon, and uh, before, do, before that I just want to mention the diffusion process is not a very simple process like mixing uh, sugar in water or something like that. It is a very, it has to happen at a very high temperature. Like uh, usually their uh, diffusion is done in diffusion furnaces. So diffusion furnaces where silicon wafers are placed and then the boron impurity is introduced in the form of a gas or in, in the form of a disks. So and usually the temperatures are above say 1050 degrees centigrade. So this is an example. So usually the temperature diffusion furnaces are greater than that, that value. So it has to happen at a very high temperature. And so now once the boron got diffused into silicon, it looks like this. The boron atom only has three electrons. And it is surrounded by, it goes into the silicon structure so it's surrounded by the four silicon atoms so now here so now if you look at the bonds here so these are the bonds and this atom is actually this electron is shared by both boron and silicon so in this bond really you have a hole here so there is no, uh, there is a missing uh, electron here. So there is a hole, but why these holes are important, we will look at it this way. Now when you apply an electric field, what happens is 
the electron say for example in this uh, covalent bond can move into the hole and then what it does is it leaves a hole here so it's as if it introduces the facility for the electrons possessing energy levels less than EV so what's happening is you said uh, this is the energy band diagram we had the EC and the EV and uh, we said all the electrons that were uh, here are mapped to energies below EV and they cannot move uh, with the application of an electric field and anything that has really escaped uh, here is mapped to here but now with the introduction of boron what happens is you introduce a special energy state somewhere here very close to EV here this is called the EA which is the acceptor energy level so now the electrons that are in in here can easily move into here they may not be able to move into the conduction band but they can move into here and you have a lot of holes and these holes will let the electrons possessing the lower energies to be able to move in an electric field so what happens is here so you have a movement of holes of holes and this is nothing but the movement of ele electrons in the so a hole moves in the opposite direction if the electron uh, so here we said electron moved here so it's as if the hole moved to this way in the opposite direction so it is the movement of electrons in the valence band so the mobility is not that great here so because it's a lower energy electrons moving so the mu p what we call the mobility of holes of holes is lower than the mobility of el free electrons but you still have introduced you could reduce the resistivity of silicon by introducing boron and then depending on the concentration of Na or the acceptor impurity usually measured in atoms per centimeter cube or boron atoms per centimeter cube so you could actually lower the resistivity rho is lowered by adding boron impurity now this is uh, the p type semiconductor now let's look at an n, n type semiconductor in an n type semiconductor what we do is we usually add um, atoms like phosphorus so phosphorus has an atomic number of 15 so phosphorus has an atomic number 15 and it has five valence electrons so now phosphorus is also diffused in the same way that a boron is diffused it happens at high temps so we cannot assume that it's a very simple process so it happens at high temperature and uh, once the phosphorus gets into the silicon structure so you have the phosphorus atom it has actually five electrons five electrons valence electrons that it can share with uh, it for to make a covalent bond and now you have silicon surrounding the phosphorus so the silicon has four so now you have four silicon atoms around the phosphorus atom now if you look at the bonds here these are the bonds so they're all filled they have complete electrons but now if you see there is this electron which is here uh, this electron is kind of free to move it's not all that free to move let's look at the energy band diagram again let me draw the energy band diagram so you have the EV and the EC and this is where the electrons the energies can be and now what the what this introduction of phosphorus does is it introduces a new level E donor level very close to the EC or the conduction band lower limit so what it means is this at this uh, electron is mapped to here so depending on the phosphorus uh, uh, the concentration of impurity added so you will have electrons sitting at this energy level and now this is what happens is even at room temp 
some of these electrons can easily move into the conduction band and you will have a lot of electrons that can uh, that can actually move about with the application of an electric field so again the resistivity is lowered for the resistivity is lowered by introducing phosphorus atoms but now this forms an n-type semiconductor where the majority carriers are electrons so we said electrons mobility mu n is greater than mu p so with the same kind of impurity concentration you can actually get lower uh, resistivity if you have n-type silicon rather than p-type silicon here so mu n is greater than mu p because this is the mu n is nothing but the mobility of the free electrons here free electrons whereas when we saw for the holes what happened was that it's not the free electrons it is actually the the valence electro the electrons that are in the bonds moving from one bond to another moving from one bond to another where there is a hole so this is uh, the that's why the mobility of uh, holes is actually lower than mobility of electrons so this is how we uh, add uh, impurities to make n type or p type semiconductors now like we have seen in, a, in another video depending on the the impurity concentration so for example uh, we said the intrinsic silicon so pure silicon in pure silicon the the resistivity was 3.2 multiplied by 10 power 5 ohm centimeter now if you added 10 power 14 say phosphorus atoms per centimeter cube the resistivity is lowered to 10 power 2 ohm centimeter and now if you added say 10 power 16 per centimeter cube phosphorus atoms per centimeter cube the resistivity can go as low as 1 ohm centimeter so this is how the rho is reduced with Na Na with the acceptor impurity or Nd which is the donor impurity for this is boron this is phosphorus and this makes a p type and this makes n type semiconductor and we said that p type the majority carriers are holes and in n type majority carriers are electrons and now if the majority carriers are holes the mobility is mu p and here the mobility is mu n and we said mu p is less than mu n or mu n is greater than mu p so this is how an intrinsic silicon can be converted to uh, an n-type or a p-type uh, silicon.